What's going on everybody? Happy Saturday. We're going to do a live today on social media, lawyers on social media, using social media for marketing. And we're going to be joined by my friend who is just joining now. Awesome, awesome. Lawyers on using social media post we're gonna pin and let's see if I can invite yes we're gonna have a really cool conversation on lawyers using social media this works here we go is it working hey it's working I see your shoulder <laughs> okay. 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 Hey, there you are. We're on. We are on. Awesome. How, How are, are you? you? I I am doing great. It's been um, a crazy few weeks over here at the firm, and and just with a bunch of stuff going on. How about you? Same. Busy. Yeah. Your end coming close. So just yeah. trying to stay on task and make sure everything is kosher by the new year. So yeah. I saw you were um, working this Saturday, which is great. Yeah. I mean, you're putting the time. You're cutting, I heard cutting checks. That's what I heard. Yes, yes. There are a lot Love of it. clients getting paid today. So that's good. That's good news. Love it. Good for you. You're, you're staying busy. And, you know, just for everybody watching, um, today we wanted to talk about um, lawyers advertising and using, specifically leveraging social media, right? And for my viewers, obviously your viewers know who you are. Give me a quick rundown of who you are and what you do. Well, my name is Gordy Michalaki. I am a lawyer, Gordy, at Lawyer Gordy on Insta. And I'm a personal injury attorney. I've been practicing for 14 years. And my firm is in the heart of Phoenix. Our firm's called Elm Law Group. And prior to being a personal injury attorney, I was an assistant attorney general. So got a lot of courtroom experience. And I love fighting for the little guy and going against those big insurance companies that don't want to pay out. So <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. So, um, you know, a little bit about what we do, right? So we do a lot of internet law, corporate law. We, we deal with a lot of online advertising and defamation, online defamation, online harassment, that kind of thing. So it's kind of a cool mix, right? And I remember it had to have been over a year ago when we were talking about like, leveraging social media and marketing and at that point you didn't really have a huge presence and you've come like 180 I think in terms of the time you're putting in and leveraging social media so I think people need to take notes on what you've done tell us what you've been doing and how it's worked for you thank you so much um well first off just being more vocal about what I do and what my knowledge is and sharing tips to viewers in the form of videos or posts on social media. I feel like usually people think that like lawyers just want to like keep all the secrets and like unless you give them a lot of money, you're not going to get any answers. And so I think that it's a way to show people your personality, your knowledge base and display that on social media so that they can see, hey, do I want to hire this person? Is this someone that I think is knowledgeable in this field? Do I think I would mesh with them personality wise? So just really showcasing what our firm does, what I do, what I know, and letting people see that on social media. And so I think that we've gotten a lot of great feedback. People will be like, oh, I, you know, calling in and doing intakes. I saw you on Instagram. I saw you on TikTok. And I'm like, this is really a thing. So yeah. Yeah. And I think you said something extremely important, which is connecting with your audience, connecting with potential referral sources, potential clients. And even if you don't get any clients out of it, it's an important part of the brand of, of being a lawyer, having a presence. Um, today's era of finding a lawyer is very different. There's no phone book to look up. And yeah, there's Google search and we can talk about that, but it's referral, but it's also, you know, who is this person? Let me learn a little bit about who they are and what they do and what better way to convey it than social media, right? Right. Absolutely. Now, you've been really disciplined about shooting like you have a shooting schedule um your videos are very professional they're professionally done clearly um so tell me like what's working because it looks great so tell me what's been working for you thank you so much I, I really appreciate that feedback 
it's really helpful to have the designated day where we shoot. So I actually do have a production company that'll come and they'll shoot one day out of the month. But I mean, writing the content, that's all me. So I'll use client scenarios, like problems that come up in cases that I see that I feel like people don't know enough about or things that maybe family or clients ask me or friends and I'll turn them into content and do a video on it. I'm like, okay, there's enough questions being asked about this topic. Why not share that with the public and let them know the answer to this question? So. And uh, are you shooting like every Saturday or every day? How you have a schedule. So how, how do you put the time aside and what's your schedule look like? It's once a month that we'll do just a batch of videos. So today is that day. We did a batch of videos starting this morning at 10. We have um, usually about 10 videos or so that we'll shoot, a bunch of outfit changes, switch it up from sitting, standing outside. Now it's a lot nicer to go outside and shoot actually in Arizona. Um, so we just knock it out in one setting. So. And, and I love that because you kind of get the momentum right it's like shoot 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 and you've got like how many hours and hours of content that you can then mix and mash up right and that's right um so there was a point where you didn't have really a presence or a very marginal presence how was it crossing the chasm from going from i'm just starting to now where you you have a fixed shooting schedule you have a presence and people almost want to expect to see Gordy's channel like they kind of want to check you out see what's going on how did you cross the chasm what was that like to to make the jump I think it was uh something within myself that I had to get over like a fear you know putting myself out there so I started shooting my own videos my own reels because reels I feel like came became super popular and focused last year and post-covid kind of during covid um, and so seeing these reels come aboard, I'm like, Hey, I can start doing that on my own. And I started doing it on my own, but I still really wasn't consistent. And so I had attended a summit, um, and it was all about social media and it was like, just put yourself out there. Like you're obviously watching people. They're not perfect. They don't speak perfectly. Not everything they say is like, you know, a Hollywood script, just put yourself yeah. out there. And so just getting over that fear really like late last year. And then I decided to go full throttle this year. And that's just really what we've been pushing all year. I've been pushing all year. And so I feel like finally, you know, several months and putting everything forth with regard to social media this year, we've really super grown. So it was worth it, you know, just kind of not caring what people think. You're just putting yourself out there and, you know, letting people receive it how they receive it. So, you know, it's you said something that's great and I want to really hone in on this, which is, um, there's never really a perfect time or a perfect moment. You have to jump in there. You have to not care about what people think of your video or really how you feel about it, right? Perfection is sort of the death knell to progress in many, in many ways, right? You have to just say, I'm shooting. Like, I've got 10 minutes now. Maybe I'm going to do a quick q and I'm going to jump on live. Um, and you just have to throw it out there because at the end of the day, the arbiter of great content is the viewer. Like, you and I may shoot something and we're like, this sucks, or I really don't sound like the way I look or I sound. Right. And somebody watches it and it's like, this is wonderful. And they share it, right? And they, they appreciate it. And it's not so much about the volume of how many views and likes and shares, but adding value, right? Um, people may not appreciate the content or we may not appreciate it the day we shoot it, but it may really make an impression six months from now when something more relevant happens and people use or watch your video, right? Um, and it's also interesting because as lawyers, it's the opposite of what people think. We're in front of people a lot, or many lawyers are. We're arguing motions, we're in court, litigators like you and I do. Right. Um, we're in front of clients, we deal with ridiculous opposing lawyers, especially insurance lawyers, right? We all know what they're like. And um, people expect us to be like that attitude. But when it, you put a camera in front of a lawyer and oh my God, that's like, so we don't know what to do next. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. front of a camera. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think um, it takes it takes a lot to be able to say, I really don't care how I look or how I feel. I'm just going to shoot this. I had a long day, whatever. You stay disciplined with it. And it's really about consistency, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. Um, 
do you have so we talked about one of the reasons why shooting and, and being on social media generally is really important for client development branding but it's also good for leads right do, do you find absolutely. that you're getting leads yes absolutely i think that it's like a vetting process you know it gives the client an opportunity to see what you know and who you are personality wise without actually having to call you and sit down with you and so you know maybe they're timid or they're scared and they don't want to like go through that whole channel or that whole process just yet but it's like looking at what you know and how you are as a person getting a glimpse inside of that and then knowing okay if i ever needed her or you you know i'm gonna hire that person i already have that lawyer in my head that should I need their services? I'm going to call them because I like watching them. I like listening to them. They know what they're talking about. So they're my yeah. person. What I found is um, for us, it's been great for lawyer to lawyer referrals. Like right. more than just clients, it's been a great outreach because, and this is the hard part, right? So as lawyers, most lawyers, especially the good ones, we're not spending our days with our feet up on the desk and just, we're not on social media, right? All day. Right. Um, maybe so, like if you can get to that point as a lawyer, where that's all you do. Great for you. Right. But most of us are practitioners. Like we're handling cases, we're doing the consultations, we're shooting the video. Um, and it's, it's a lot of time, like we're busy people, but taking the time out, like giving it importance and saying, listen, even if it's 15 minutes is all I have, I'm going to do it. Right. I think it's a big deal. And, and it becomes like any, it comes like going to the gym where even if it's 30 minutes or it's an hour and then you can carve it out, you have to, you have to do it, right? It's a part of your practice. Um, what, um, when, when you get leads, is it people who watch the video? Like how does that lead generation process work for you as a result of your videos? And by the way, is it just Instagram or is it YouTube? Is it other platforms as well? It's TikTok, it's Facebook, it's Instagram, which is what I'm primarily on. Um, and, and people will say, yeah, you know, I just saw your video. They might not even be a follower. It would just pop up in their feed. And so that might be a way or it will be other attorneys that maybe I went to law school with or I worked with at the attorney general's office or the court of appeals or the governor's office or whatever, you know, job I had prior to this. We follow each other. We follow each other's careers and they might be a transactional attorney or an estate planning attorney. And they're like, yeah, I've, I've got my go-to personal injury person. She's it. I'm going to send her a case. And so, I mean, that actually just happened just a couple of days ago. My former intern from the governor's office, um, he was actually Sparky the Sun Devil by the way, wow. he's a wow. partner at Snell and Wilmer and he follows me and I follow him and he sent me a client. And so it just goes like that. It comes from all channels. So it's, it's really a great networking tool, right? And Absolutely. the point I was making is the time that you have, like if you have to spend two hours to go to a networking event, you may be better off spending two hours of it online. Mm -hmm. shooting content, interacting with people who have an interest in what you have to say and what you do, right? It's, it's, that's kind of the world we live in now. That's right. That is. That's the way of the, the world nowadays. So I wouldn't disagree now, with that. <laughs> Gordy, how about um, compare like what you do on your web? Do you do web SEO and web content as well as, you know, the, the Instagram and TikTok videos? Or are you focusing more on, on the social media and not so much the, the website stuff? So I've spoken to SEO gurus and there's, you know, the best in the country and all of this. And I picked their brain and I said, okay, I'm doing these social media videos. I'm thinking about delving into SEO. What do you think? And they took a look at my website and they said, if you really want to be successful in SEO, you're going to have to spend probably about six figures to really get it to where you want it to be. They said, you know, social media is doing so great right now in terms of advertising, especially TikTok and Instagram reels. They're like, do that for one solid year where you're just posting your videos consistently. Once that year rolls around, then you can do your SEO. So I know people are doing simultaneously. They might be maybe doing a lower SEO, a lower social media, you know, video marketing um, campaign, trying to do it all at once. Um, but I was advised against it when I consulted with some of these SEO gurus from around, around the country. So you know, it's hard to know what works and everything yeah. takes time for turnaround. So it's not like you do something today, you'll know tomorrow if there's payoff or not. And so it'll be interesting to see once 2023 rolls around how, where we're at. It's, it's a long-term investment, 
and, and it's it's what's nice about it is you shoot a video, you post it, and of course you can use it across multiple channels: Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, etc. You know, uh, YouTube Shorts especially. But it's it's there and it stays. It's static. It's not like you shot a video and it's gone, right? It's it's there. Um, interestingly enough, so for us, our social media content is. It was an afterthought. Like for us, it was primarily our web assets. We have a couple of different websites. You know, we do backend SEO. We do a lot of uh, lead generation work on the backend. And our website has always been the primary lead generation tool for us. Um, and then a couple of years ago, we got a little more like, okay, we should be on TikTok, right? Like we rebranded, we should be on um, Instagram. And then I realized that people would, would send us messages like, we really like this video. Talk more about that. Or, this was so useful. And I'm thinking, no one's going to watch this. Like, who cares? You know, we're talking about. But um, it's, a great, it's a great way to also do niche marketing, right? So um, as you know, we do a lot of online defamation stuff. And this is actually a good segue to some of the, some of the after effects of lawyer marketing on, on social media. I don't know if you've had any trolls yet. Have you had any trolls? I had a, a TikTok's brutal. So TikTok is rogue. TikTok's brutal. Yeah, I have TikTok's brutal. had some rogue trolls. Um, and then I'm like, well, then that means like they're watching and they're engaging. So like, that's good. I mean, so I guess all commentary, even trolls is welcome because it's engagement. It's, it's people who are looking at your videos, listening to your content and reacting to it. Can't all be positive. So... You know, um, this is what I always tell people. Controversy is great. Controversy is great for lawyers as well. It's great for marketing. And people are afraid. They want to, like, delete, keep it super clean. And right. this is not a Google review. This is a chance to stimulate conversation. Maybe you said something that somebody really dis disagrees with. That's cool. And, and that's not considered trolling as much as sometimes people are just obnoxious. There's people who have nothing better to do than make, you know, some really hateful, like, I get that. And, and that's part of, unfortunately, what comes with being online and having a presence. But right. I think um, what I think most lawyers that I talk to who are like kind of scared and don't want to put themselves out there, that's what they're worried about is, well, somebody's going to disagree with me or I may not be perfect. I'm going to get a bunch of trolls. I'm like, you got to hope you got to welcome that. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly. I even got a comment on TikTok. I did like a video about boats and boating laws in Arizona because you know, it's so dang hot here in the summer. A lot of people are on boats and going to the lake and all that. And some guy on TikTok was like, yeah, it's really cool that you did a video about boats, but like most people can't afford boats. Why don't you do a video on bicycles? So today I shot a video about bicycles. Beautiful. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. I was like, bicycles I got you. <laughs> yeah, I got you. No, it's, it's great. And you know, the other thing is it gives us a good metric to watch and see what works. Like I said, we don't really know you know, we might put some of the best videos that I've done, believe it or not, I was just, it was impromptu. I took my phone out like this, no fancy equipment, cleaned my lens and just threw the camera up, did a quick live or I felt really uh, compelled to, 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 I read something or I had a case or just came out of a deposition, right? There's times where you have this inspiration and you just need to put it out there. You just need to tell people like, this is my experience. This is what happened. And that's what storytelling is about. That's right. That's right. It. I mean, and usually I feel like when I look, I'm more gravitated towards those videos, especially like this summer with the Johnny Depp trial. And I think you guys posted a bunch of stuff on that. Those yeah. videos were going viral and people that started posting that really started getting a bunch of followers because people were interested in learning about the trial and hearing what the legal takes were. And so I think that those more off the cuff videos tend to do better. Um, they're more organic and natural. And I think that viewers really want to see that more than like a production type video. So, you know. Um, how do you come up with your content ideas? Is it because obviously you have pre-planned shoots. So you're kind of like, okay, we shot for several, however many weeks of worth of content you have now. How did you come up with this is my roll call of the topics we're going to cover? Probably when I first started, it was pretty easy because it's like, I don't, I didn't have much. So it's like, all right, personal injury, you know, let's talk about dog bites. Let's talk about car accidents. Let's talk about underinsured motorist coverage, like the basic fundamentals of this area of law. The more videos we did, the less opportunity there was to be more fundamental because I already spoken about it. So then it's like, you have to transition into what are the trends? What am I seeing in cases? 
I'm negotiating with insurance companies every day. What are some of the problems that keep arising or what are some mistakes that clients keep making um, before they call us? And so that started to transpire into content as well. And then sometimes you try to make it a little bit fun and throw like a little bit of a twist in there. So it's interesting to people because the law can be a little boring. And so that's kind of how I get my content um, is just looking at what's in my practice going on trend wise. What are people asking me client wise, friends, family? What do they want to know? What are they DMing? What are they asking in the DMs? Or yeah. in the comments? So like the bicycle guy. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. There's other good resources. Like I like to look at, um, there's a platform called Quora. I don't know if you've heard of Quora yeah. where people can ask questions and you answer. We're on Quora, but um, it's a good place to see like, what are people asking about? Like, what are these little one-off, um, very nuanced questions that people are asking for that, that need answers? And we may just do, do a Q&A or a live on it or a, a reel or a post. Um, your comment section is a brilliant place to look for for ideas. And just the day-to-day -day inspiration, like I mentioned, and, and like you said, there's no surefire way to know how you're adding value other than to put it out there. Like what you think is valuable, somebody may think is garbage and what somebody think what you think is garbage somebody might think is extremely valuable right Absolutely. um and don't i think the me one of the underlying messages messages for lawyers who are looking to get into social media marketing or branding is don't overthink it you have to be a doer in this game you can't like stop and make it perfect and um you know all you need is a phone and an internet connection and you can get started right Absolutely. And that's something I was talking to my production guy with this morning was kind of like where we started and where we are now. And, you know, in the beginning, it was like the scripts were like so long. We were like a minute to 45 seconds. And now we're more like 10 seconds. And it's really quick and snippet. And it's still garnering people's attention. Um, the outfits, you know, I was, I was planning these outfit changes. And it was this thing. And, he, you know, we, it was just overthought and now we've yeah. just simplified it so much and streamlined it so much so it's like the roadblocks are less and less and less and it's just the goal is just to get the content out there so nobody really cares if you have five outfit changes three outfit changes whatever you know get the content out there get in a concise form we're kind of a short attention span society now and just put it out there i um speaking of what you wear this is funny I've never said this before, but I'll, I'll tell you, anybody who looks at our page or like my YouTube videos, I wear very similar shades for branding purposes, like blue, like our logo is blue and gray. So I'll wear dark blues, light blues or black. And so when you look at our page, although I don't pre-plan, I just pull whatever's sitting out there. It's usually in that realm just because it works for our brand and it's consistent. And I think people like the brain likes consistency, even in, in, um, in social, in the social media world. So the aesthetic kind of works. Um, but again, like you said, the key is don't overthink it, right? Just just right. do and see it works. Um, it. So I, I was going to go, go to your, uh, your photographing and video. So you actually have a, a team that you work with, videographers, professional right. videographers. Right. Okay. They'll shoot the content and they'll edit it. But it's my job to write the content and, you know, come up with these ideas. So... Yeah, it's a team for people, for people for people that are watching um, Gordy who who don't want to invest in professional photographers and videographers. Do they do they need that to start? Absolutely not. I feel like you literally just need your phone and just to get rid of that fear if you have that to get started. Just start doing it. One thing that I did that I felt like was helpful was for some reason, like in my mind, I started more with stories. I was more gravitated towards stories than reels. Why? Because it's only there for 24 hours. And so I'm like, yeah. okay, not putting myself <laughs> out there forever. I'm just putting myself yeah. out there for 24 hours. So I would be in my car and like if something popped up in my head or something came through in an email that was like an issue, I would just start talking about it. Even if it was like a rant, like, can you believe this attorney did this and this and that? Like these insurance companies are horrible or whatever. And so I felt like just talking to my followers that way got me started and more comfortable. And then we transitioned into the reels. But you can do reels on your phone. You don't have to be working with a production company. It's super easy to do really on your own. So I, um, I want to emphasize this for lawyers that are going to watch this later. Um, you never know. Like I was watching... Uh, I was I was at my desk late one evening 
and a client of mine said, hey, you need to, you need to say something about this. There's, a, there's a, a reel that I did about this football tackle where the football player tackled um, a, a, a fan who ran out onto the field. Yeah. Do you remember? And, and the yeah, question was, can the football player yeah, be charged with assault? And first I did, so I did an experiment. And this is what I love to do. I love to experiment on social media. I'll do something stupid on purpose or I'll do like no, no audio, just facial reaction and see, and I'll compare it to one that actually has like audio where I'm giving advice. The one that was eight seconds long, I kid you not, eight seconds long. And it was just me making facial expressions got hunt, like thousands of more plays and, and comments than the one that was, Hey, this is, this is what assault is under California law. And this is what, you know, what the defenses are. On TikTok, or excuse me, on Instagram, it was the opposite on YouTube. So it's just like, you, you don't know. And you need to do, like you said, at least probably a year. And I'm a data junkie. I love looking at the stats and the insights and seeing what works. But you can't do that too early. You can't obsess with, you know, the data too early. I feel like you have to just put it out there, get a good aggregate, you know, six months to a year run, and then see what worked for your various channels, right? Absolutely. And that's what we've done, you know, just starting in the beginning of the year, you don't know what's going to be popular and what people are going to like and what people are going to want to watch. So you just really need like a good six months to a year, like you said, and we really didn't start measuring anything until maybe that point. And then we started seeing things. Okay, people like this, people don't like that. We'll do this format versus that one. But yeah, it's like the most simple things, like where you're just not even maybe talking or just pointing to things and that gets yeah. more likes or views. And it's like, you know, it's interesting. We as lawyers think that we have to always be talking <laughs> to get the right. likes, but. Or, or that it has to be super technical. Like, oh, right. we're, we're, we gotta dice up something, show the arguments or get into detail. And that's yeah. just not true. People like it plain and simple. Very true. People like it plain and simple. People like it broken down. We know the law, we deal with it every day. And sometimes I'll get my production company will say that they'll be like, Hey, this word, like no one's going to know that, you know, just super simplify it, strike out that line, just put this one word, done deal, you know, and so simple is better. Um, and I've learned that through this process. So, so you shot uh, today was your uh, once a month filming session. That's right. And so how many hours uh, of shooting time was it? It can range. So probably in the beginning, it'd probably be about four hours of shooting time. So that's just to shoot it. That's not like the content writing or anything like that. Today was super quick. Like I said, we're getting really efficient. I think we were done within an hour and like 15, 20 minutes, like 10 pieces, okay. boom, 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 done deal. And so I think the more you do it, the better you get at it. You start learning how to dual purpose content as well. Sometimes I'll just yep. like, stick my tripod in the corner while they're shooting me. And then I'll add like an audio to it that's trending on Instagram reels or TikTok, And it ends up getting a bunch of views because the audio is trending and it's literally like just filming me getting filmed, you know? So it's kind of funny how you can create so much content. You just got to open your ideas up a little bit on how to do that. The, um, <clears throat> the idea of using, so you got 10 solid pieces of content we'll call it. Yep. And then I think people underestimate reusing content differently. Like I, I'm telling, we have a, a marketing person on staff full time. So she will edit, she does, you know, the video edits, the Twitter post, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Uh, but two important things. One, like you said, I think the lawyers really have to write the content. We have to connect with our audience. We have to actually deliver the message. So we should be the ones who come up with the with, with the message. Obviously use experts and, and take people's advice on maybe how to frame it and, and how to make it digestible. Like your, your videographer said, people aren't gonna like that word, whatever the, the language was, make it stupid simple, right? I mean, um, that's helpful, but we have to be actively involved in the process. We can't just expect somebody with the phone to shoot it all for us and, and have it stick, I think at least. I agree. Um, but then the second point is, you can use like this live will be a perfect example. We're going to take this live. You're going to take this live too. We'll send it to you. Um, the, the, the video file as well. We're going to post it. We'll post it on YouTube. We'll post it on Instagram, but then we'll take 
sound bites, whether it's 10 seconds, 30 seconds, you know, here's Gordy's insight, here's Rice's commentary, and we'll, we might get five or six juicy little things out of this, right? Right. And you, you, people should also pay attention to that, reusing content. We, we think that's bad, like, oh, I don't want to, no, it's, it's not, because you can put a different spin on it. You can put um, a sound bite, you might not even use the original audio, or we've done ones where we just grab the audio from a video and then put some different visual to it. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many ways to do it and to cut it and to get different pieces of content from already posted content. And I'll do the same. Sometimes I'll just listen to these like trending audios on Insta or on TikTok and mute myself talking and just put that over there and put like a little bubble over my head and it'll be something completely different. So there's a lot of ways to repurpose content. You don't have to work harder, work smarter <laughs> is, is the key. Do you use any uh, apps yourself on the on your phone to edit when you're shooting yourself? Um, is there is is there any handy dandy tool that you would recommend using? I mean, for fonts, I'll maybe use Canva or Word Swag. But I mean, generally, what I've been taught is that using in-app features is helpful when it comes to algorithms. So if you yeah. want to start adding maybe captions or music for maybe somewhere else, you almost are a little bit penalized with the algorithm because the algorithm knows that that's foreign. So if you're in the app and you can use the captions in the app and the audio in the app and all that kind of stuff, it's always better because I think that Instagram recognizes that and rewards you almost same with TikTok. So that's kind of what I've been taught and that's primarily what we do. So that's smart. That's a very good point. And because it's such a competitive landscape and everyone's competing for eyeballs on the, the platforms themselves, right. um, YouTube is now heavily invested in shorts, right? So um, I don't think, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think YouTube penalizes you the same way TikTok, TikTok and Instagram do. So in other words, recording something on TikTok and then putting it on Instagram, if you don't do it correctly, I think Instagram doesn't like that and they're not going to show your reel as much and vice versa but you could certainly take like this live i've seen it youtube doesn't seem to care right they'll just right. If, if your content's good you're seoing your videos or even if you're not and you get lucky and it, and it goes viral i think you can still do it like that you don't need to use the native app or create unique pieces just for youtube right which is great so if you're not used to just or wanting to do because it, it is duplicative in, 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 in a sense, if you're trying to post on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and all that, if you can be rewarded by posting in YouTube and it's not going to penalize you, why not? You know, so yeah, that's a great tip. <laughs> Gordy, your number one recommendation, we'll say two, your top two recommendations um, to lawyers who are, trying to get started using social media to leverage and market their, their practice. What are, what are your number two go-to recommendations? I would say just get rid of the fear, you know, just don't even worry about how you're going to be perceived. It's such an area that's out of your control. Just put yourself out there and then secondly, don't overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate it with, you know, flowery language or super difficult legalese that people aren't going to understand. So if you get rid of the fear and you simplify the process, you're more likely to get it done, you know, and you're going to put that content out there. And that's what the goal is ultimately. So simplification and you said it perfectly simplification will actually increase the odds that you as the lawyer are going to participate in the process right yeah that's if right. you make it too complicated like oh my setting like my desk is a mess right now it's off it's off camera but i was in i'm in the middle of a like a move and all this stuff i'm like you know what it's time it's one o'clock gordy and i'm going to sign on but we're going to get it done you were writing checks to client filming we got other things going on but you know we made the time that's it. And we made it happen. Uh, thank you for doing this with me. This was great. Thank you. Um, Thanks for inviting me. This was so much fun. We will do this again, yes, um, in the next couple okay. weeks or so, and we'll connect again before the end of the year. Um, anyone who's not following, definitely follow Gordy. Great content. You've really come a long way. I wanted to tell you that since you first started. And I feel, yeah, you've done a marvelous job. Um, keep killing it. And um, best of luck to you. 
Thank you so much. I'm so appreciative. And your content, your page, super knowledgeable. You're my go-to attorney for all things defamation and internet internet based. So awesome. I'll keep awesome. sending people your way. <laughs> Thank you. Really appreciate it, Gordy. Enjoy your weekend. Don't overkill yourself today. Cut the last check. Go home and enjoy. Thank you. Likewise. Have a great rest of your weekend. Hey, thanks. See you soon. Bye.